Hey y'all, coaching the fight here, looking at the old chalkboard. My wife is wanting to erase this board, so she's wanting me to get this out. Huh? You hear her laughing in the background. She she wants to erase the board, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this class that I've been working on. What is the title of it? You remember what I'm saying? I do not remember. Oh, why I think something's gonna happen in 2019. All right, talking about the fall feast days. Now, you you know. Um, I don't want to narrow it down to one particular feast day. Um, um, at the time when I wrote this, I believe I was narrowing it down. So if I have that up there, we're going to ignore it or we'll, we'll still talk about it. But um, it could be all three now. I'm thinking, you know, trumpets, which is the first one, atonement day, which comes 10 days later, and then tabernacles, which is a seven or eight day feast. It's, I can't remember if it's, is it eight days, eight days. I believe it's an eight day feast. And um, we, but you know, as far as what we're talking about is 2019, 2019, the year, you know, toward the end of 2000. And we're going, I'm going to include Christmas. I'm going to include Christmas. More importantly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put Christmas higher than the other three states. And I'll tell you why. I may, I may tell you if I don't, in this video, if it don't, you know, be too long or whatever. But those are uh, four days in 2019. Um, that you know, I'm looking forward to some something happening, um, uh, materialistic this time. You know, it's always spiritual. You know, people talk about what they missed back there in 2017. Well, you you miss the uh, church going into the wilderness. You know, what I'm saying go to Revelation chapter 12. If you don't if if you don't realize that anything spiritual happened in 2017. And you need to go read Revelations 12 and try to catch yourself up. You could be involved in it or you could know somebody, you know, that got caught up in that. Um, Revelations 12, um, chapter, that, that, that chapter 12. Um, but what we're looking at here is some stuff that I was writing down for a class on 2019. Now, first up, I'm going to put up here Will's Dream. And I should give you a card. You can flip back, come back through, listen to it again. And when I get to Will's Dream, go ahead and click on Will's Dream. It's about three minutes long um, about his Atonement Day dream. And then um, we were just talking about the Revelation 12 sign in the sky, that uh, event that happened there on, um, in September right close to it. And I believe it was on. I did the calculations at one time that it actually fell on Trumpet's Day of 2017 you have to remember that the, the day starts in the evening time so while people was waiting you know on the day you have to remember that the event that 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 trumpet started that evening and it ends in the evening time too so you have to look at that closely when you when you're looking at that um that star constellation if you don't know about it it was a star constell star alignment an alignment of star constellations, let me get that straight, that happened in 2017 that matched up with Revelations 12. If you open up your books to Revelations 12, I think it's verse 1 and 2, you you um, you can actually um, see, uh, you're on YouTube, or you can go look at it and you can see YouTube videos on that event that happened there. But, you know, I believe you are aware of that one. The other one is the 400 years, you may not be... Um, um, fully aware of the 400 years of slavery promised to Abraham. He was told that his seed would be in a distant land that his fathers never knew of and they would be serving this people who look real harsh and, you know, acted real, you know, harsh toward them um, naked for 400 years and, you know, uh, slavery for the uh, um, African Americans started there in 2000, I mean, sorry, started there in 1619 and you know, I've did I've did a lot of searching trying to find where excuse me, I did a lot of searching trying to find where um, there was another slave event that occurred in 2000 and um, I mean I'm sorry 1619 after 1619 where they you know announced a date that slaves came and I can't find one now I'm sure if nothing happens in 2019. There's going to be other dates where they're going to say, oh, no, those ones that came in 1619, those were indentured servants, and they really didn't count because they, you know, ended up, you know, owning land, and they got really, really wealthy or whatever. And the date is, you know, a few years later, you know, but as of today, I can't find that anywhere. I mean, I've been looking, Google and everywhere, and everything says 
2000, everything says 1619, and I keep saying 2019 because 2019 is actually 400 years later. And one of the reasons why I'm thinking 2019 is important is because how is this year going to end without there being a, an event that, you know, at least comes close to, you know, what Abraham was promised. And he was promised a lot of stuff as far as, um, and I have to go pull those verses up. If somebody will, they can put it in the verses down in the comments um, where Abraham got that promise that, you know, his seed would, would, would be over there. You know, we talked about that already. Um, so, I, so I believe that's another reason why 2019 is, is important. And, okay, so um, the Cali quakes, I believe that those were um, a kind of a wake-up call. They haven't had one in a very, very long time. And so they should actually be, you know, still a little shaken up by that. It just happened a few months ago. And, you know, these feast days are coming up here in a couple of months. So they should still be shaken up. They should still be thinking about the fact that, you know, they, they're waiting for this earthquake. I think if it lasted years, if there was years later, they would go back to sleep. So that's another reason why I believe that, you know, 2019 is important, you know, later on in these, in these feast days. And like I said, I believe Christmas, Chris, I believe Christmas is more likely when, it, when the event is going to happen. And maybe I'll, I'll tell you guys about that. But, you know, I'm not putting away, you know, t t uh, uh, tabernacles. You know, I've always said, you know, the earth's going to shake on tabernacles because we're intense, because we're intense. And, you know, that's what puts, you know, tabernacles right up there with Christmas, you know, as far as which day it could actually fall on. I believe it's going to be either on you know, tabernacles, which I, you know, uh, I, I'm going to say I say it first, but then um, uh, Christmas, which I'm saying more strongly, you know, um, only because of verses, I think, I can't remember, was Isaiah 24 and Jer Jeremiah 4, I believe I'm, I'm, I'm in memory space here, so I'm not really sure what, what exactly um, those chapters were, but... Um, so I think those Cali, Cali events were wake-up calls, and I think that points to 2019. Um, there it is. I said I, I put it up there, next unfulfilled feast. I talked about it anyway, um, but Atonement Day is the next unfulfilled feast, and there is a verse, I mean a chapter, that talks about Atonement Day too. I read that once, and I'm going to have to find it. It, um, it, uh, it slips my mind, but um, I'm trying to remember. It was the, um, I know I found the chapter when I was looking for the first day, for the 10th day of the seventh month. I was looking specifically for the 10th day of the seventh month when I found that chapter. And, um, but I want to say it had something to do, it was the chapter that had something to do with the war in Jerusalem over there. But like I said, I'm in memory space. Um. But now the, 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 the next one on the list is first coming in uh, 26. The first coming, his first coming was in 26. 26. Um, now, <clears throat> you, um, I don't know if anybody's asked this question. I know I've never been asked this question and I've never asked it to anybody else other than the Father in Heaven. Which was when was when exactly was the first coming? We're waiting for the second coming. When exactly was the first coming? And the reason why is because um, um, when you read Enoch, he said two thousand years. He didn't say two thousand one years. He didn't say about two thousand years. He said exactly two thousand years. Now there's some that can do the calculations and see that he he said see that the messiah came at exactly year 5500 which he said on the fifth day you know on the five and, and five and a half days you you know i've looked at the numbers and you know i haven't broke out a pencil and a calculator yet but you know they look pretty close that the messiah came exactly that year exactly that year he came on exactly that year and you know you look at daniel and those and you know it falls very close to that year and you say okay so when was his first coming you remember that, you know, the way I understand the story and, and, you know, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But the way I understand it is that he came into started his ministry there at the beginning of Matthew or the beginning of Mark. He started his ministry there um, uh, at the age of 30 and he was in a ministry for three and a half years. OK. And, you know, um, before they uh, 
um, 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 put him on the cross or whatever. So you have to go back and and come up what I came up with. And like I said, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I came up with the year 26 was his first coming when he put him in that water the first time. And he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I believe when he made that announcement, it actually changed the world to where the kingdom of heaven actually became at hand at that moment where, you know, whereas before the kingdom of heaven wasn't available for anybody. The only place they was actually able to go was paradise up until that point. And, you know, so back up a little bit for because the next one um i'm gonna say and i told my wife i wouldn't track she's trying to sweep the floor so i gotta stay still but the, the next one on the list oh did i finish that one um got a little distracted there um 2026 so when you when you take away seven years i get i get 2019 i get 2019 really easy just doing the math there um um on that one and then the next one was the Mayans, the Mayans 2012. And I heard this from that Robert Breaker individual. I have to give him credit for this. And I, I think he gave credit for whom he heard it from or who he heard it from. But the Mayans 2012, um, and, you know, uh, what I remember him saying was something to the effect of it was like, it's like uh, Joseph in Egypt where you had um, seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine and the seven years of plenty actually started in 2012 the way i understand that the seven years of plenty actually started in 2012 that's that would have been why you know mr trump was or president trump was able to inherit a uh growing economy because uh the uh, previous president had done so well whereas you know we don't want to get into politics here but maybe it stir some people up you know what i'm saying because Bush messed things up. Wait, wait, let's go all the way back. Uh, from what I understand, Reagan was a little back far from me. Well, Reagan had it going on a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But then, and then you had Bush Sr., which took us to war, you know what I'm saying? And then you had um, Clinton, who, had, who was doing pretty well again. I'm going to say again. Clinton got us going pretty well again. And then, um, uh, um. Bush came in and messed things up with this big deficit that he then blamed on Obama, who not only got rid of Bush's deficit and all of the damage that Bush had done, but actually got us back on track doing, you know, pretty well, even, you know, getting us even further where, you know, he came from behind and scored a few touchdowns, you know what I mean? And then now we got Trump in there and, you know what I'm saying, anyway... We, we rambling there. So and that's a long way of saying that the seven years of plenty may be, you know, about to be ending there. But, you know, like I said, I'm giving Robert Breaker credit for that. Again, it's a simple math one. Uh, seven, seven plus 2012 because 2019 when things start to turn south for us here. All right. Um, what else is up there? Oh, yeah. Don't forget about the new moon days, guys. That's another uh, feast day that's coming up. I can't tell you exactly when that one is, but I'm going to tell you that they're important. If you have one of them calendars to tell you when the new moon is, um, just go for the day after just real quick. You can check our channel and we do classes on how to how to tell exactly when that day is. But unless if you don't get around to watching some of our other videos, just, um, just find your moon on your calendar and shoot for the day after as a celebration. Uh, keep a holy day, a holy day where you would actually worship. And it doesn't really tell you not to work or anything. So you could actually worship at work or whatever. And um, what else is up there? Um, um, not sure what those are. Uh, well, that's some notes for the kids about putting up uh, cucumbers and pears. And, and that's some Revelation 6 stuff that I was working on right there. And that's kind of where we, you know, the cl next class we're working on. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. The next class we're working on is these, these, um, these, uh, uh, the set, the sixth seal, the sixth seal, and how, you know, the, the trumpets and the vials all fit together with the six seal. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and close it out there. Hit that like button if you got something out, something out of it. Shalom.